Welcome to lecture 2 F. In this lecture, we are focusing on certain numerical problems and some design aspects of longer latency pipeline and branch prediction techniques. Over the past few videos, we have seen the concepts of branch prediction and control hazards and longer latency pipeline. So, to get more grip on the subject, this session is exclusively dedicated as a tutorial on long latency pipeline as well as branch prediction techniques. We will take few cases to understand these concepts more deeper. So, here we have few statements that have been given and then we have to identify which of them are false. So, let me read these four statements. For a MIPS multi cycle floating point pipeline, the initiation interval of floating point MUL is larger than that of floating point ADD. The second one is on wow hazard cannot happen on a MIPS multi cycle floating point pipeline. Third statement in a MIPS multi cycle floating point pipeline that supports operand forwarding, there would be 7 stalls between a pair of adjacent multiplication instruction that has a raw dependency between them. And the fourth one is a 2 3 type branch predictor uses the outcome of last 2 power 3 or 8 branches to index into the branch prediction buffer where each entry has a 3 bit predictor. So, we have to figure out which are the statements are false. It would be good if you take one by one and trying to analyze what is the meaning of it. So, the first statement is for a MIPS multi cycle floating point pipeline, we are going to talk about initiation interval. Initiation interval of floating point multiplication is larger than a floating point add. So, this is the multi cycle pipeline where I of I D, then we have four branches, one is for integer unit, one cycle EX unit, then we have a pipeline multiplier M1 to M7, seven stages of pipeline to multiplier, four stages of floating point adder, pipeline to floating point adder, and then we have a 24 cycle division unit, both integer and floating point, and at the end the same mem and right back. So, here as we have already seen in the previous videos, what is the concept of latency and initiation interval is been given. So, we are talking about initiation interval of two operations, one is floating point multiplication and other one is floating point add. So, what is initiation interval? Initiation interval means how much delay should be there in order to start the same functional unit operation again. Since both my FP add and FP mul are pipelined, so you do it in A 1 that is the floating point adder after the end of one clock cycle, the partially processed floating point adding operations result is moving to A 2 then to A 3. So, A 1 would be free at the end of the clock cycle. So, the very next clock cycle we can take up a new pair of floating point adding provided there is no data dependency between this instructions. Similarly, your floating point multiplier also it has the same same feature it is pipelined M 1 to M 7. So, both your floating point adder as well as the floating point multiplier F p add and F p mul can take new instruction pairs or can take new operand values in the very next clock cycle. So, the initiation interval of both F p add and F p mul is 1. So, the statement that is been mentioning that so as clearly told for an FP add and for an FP multiply the initiation interval is 1, they differ in latency only by 3. So, for a MIPS multi cycle floating point pipeline initiation interval of FP mul is larger than that of FP add is wrong, they both are same actually. The second statement wow hazard cannot happen in a MIPS multi cycle floating point pipeline. Let us see what it is. What is wow hazard? Wow hazard means right after right hazard. So, now in this case you see that is the various instruction that is being given you have a multiplication operation which is going to write back at this clock cycle. It, it has this 7 cycles of floating point multiplication and then we have a floating point adding which will take only 4 cycles in the EX. Even though the adder started after the multiplier the fetching of second instruction happens after the first one it is completing before the first instruction. So, this is a classical case wherein if both of them are going to write into same register, then it is a classical case wherein this can happen. Similarly, a store instruction that started much later in the pipeline is completing before this also. So, if you look at the first instruction is completing last, second instruction is completing before the first one, 
the fourth instruction is even completing before the second one. So, if at least some of them are operating on the same register, then there is a possibility of a wow hazard. Since even though we are fetching in order, decoding in order, since the execution latency is varying with one cycle for integer unit, seven cycles for multiply unit, four cycles for floating point add and 24 cycles that has been taking for division, it will be taking a variable amount of time in order to reach the write back. So, when the write back happens in out of order, there is obviously possibility of a wow hazard. So, the second statement wow hazard cannot happen in a MIPS multi cycle floating point pipeline that is wrong. Third one again on MIPS multi cycle floating point. In a MIPS multi cycle floating point pipeline that supports operand forwarding, there will be seven stalls between a pair of adjacent multiplication instruction that has a raw dependency between them. So, here we are talking about two multiplication instruction there would be seven stalls between a pair of adjacent multiplication instruction that has a raw dependency between them. So, let us try to write the instructions. We are going to talk about multiplication instruction on F1, F2 and F3 and there is a dependency. The second one is also there. So, the dependency is you are going to reuse your F1. So, F3 is same. So, this is called the raw dependency between them and let me write to F0. Now, if you write the clock cycles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 like this and I am going to talk about this is my first instruction and this is my second instruction. So, the first instruction you fetch decode then execution is m1, m2, m3, m4, m5, m6 and m7 and then there is a mem stage and then there is a W. So, if you take 7 cycles and 7 plus 4 at the clock cycle 11 only the first instruction get over. Now, we have operand forwarding. My second instruction I am trying to fetch, I will decode, but then there is a data dependency between them because the F1 result has to be ready. Even if you use operand forwarding, only at this point the result is available only at the end of clock cycle number 7. So, my M1 can start only here M1, M2, M3 this is also multiplication. So, how many stalls? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I have to wait for 6 clock cycles. There is a stalling of 6 clock cycles between 2 multiplication instructions, floating point multiplication instruction that has a data dependency between them even if we are enabling operand forwarding. So, in the statement it is mentioned that there exist 7 stalls no, we have only 6 stalls. So, the third statement is also false. Now, we are going to the last one. The last one is about correlating branch predictor. A 2, 3 type branch predictor uses the outcome of the last 2 power 3 that is 8 branches to index into the branch prediction table where each entry has a 3 bit predictor. So, let us try to see what this is the statements. A PQ type predictor uses the outcome of the last P branches. So, when I talk about PQ, last P branches are used to index into the branch prediction buffer. Each of the entries would be a qubit predictor, that is the meaning of it. And this qubit predictor typically use 2 power Q state finite state machine. So, when I talk about 2, 3 type branch predictor, I look into the outcome of the last 2 branches. The last two branches can be both not taken nn, it can be nt, it can be tn or it can be tt. So, there can be four possibilities that is there when it comes to the outcome of the last two branches. So, my table will have basically, if you look into the table, table will have four entries per row. One entry, what if the last two is not taken? One entry for not taken and taken one entry for taken, not taken and one entry both are taken. So, based upon four possible combination of the last two branches, the table may have four entries. So, a 2, 3 type branch predictor uses the outcome of last 2, 3 branches to index into branch prediction buffer. Now, what is this 3 indicates? Each of the entry is a 3 bit predictor. If it is a 3 bit predictor, then there will be total of 8 states inside that. 
So the statement a 2 3 type branch predictor uses the outcome of last 8 branches that is wrong. It uses only the outcome of last 2 branches to index into the branch predictor table where it does not enter. This portion is correct whereas this portion is wrong. So overall the statement is wrong. So the last statement is also be defined as wrong. So in this case we can see that all the 4 statements are wrong. So the question which of the following statement is false? 1, 2, 3 and 4, all 4 are false. We could be able to answer only if we are clear about the concept of initiation interval, we are clear about the hazard that is going to happen in a multi-cycle floating point pipeline, we should be clear about what is the stalling that happens in the case of dependency between instructions and about different types of branch prediction especially on correlating predictor what these numbers means. We now move into the next question, this is about branch prediction especially on correlating predictor. So, this is slightly complex concept, but then this tutorial session will really help you step by step we are defining what is going to happen, what are the changes that are occurring inside your branch prediction buffer and how the finite state machine is being updated. So, let us consider the 16 actual outcomes of a single static branch, I am going to talk about a single branch, T means it is taken and N means not taken. So, this is the outcome of 16, last 16 occurrences of a branch, the first one and this is the latest one, the 16th one. So, here N indicates branch was not taken and T indicates branch was taken. A two level branch predictor of 1, 2 type is being used. So, it uses the outcome of the last one branch to index into a table wherein each entry is a 2 bit predictor. Since there is only one branch in the program, Indexing to BHT with PC is relevant. I am indexing into the PC only with the branch outcome only. The last branch only is being used to enter into the branch history table or branch prediction buffer. How many mispredictions are there and which of the branches in the sequence would be mispredicted? So, we need to essentially fill up a table. Okay. Since this is a 2 bit predictor, these are the two states. We have four states represented as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. 0, 0 and 0, 1, when we are in that state, the predictions are not taken. When we are in 1, 0 and 1, 1 state, then these states predict that the branch will be taken. So, we have to understand out of the four states, Whenever we refer into the table, the state diagram indicates if it is if the state is 0, 0 or 0, 1, then the prediction is whatever branch you are now referring to that will not be taken. If the state is marked as 1, 0 or 1, 1, then the prediction is that the branch would be taken. Now, whatever is the state values that has been shown, this state value would be changing based upon what is the real outcome. So, when you are in 0, 0, your prediction is not taken, but actually also not taken means we will continue. But if actually it was taken, then we move to 0, 1 state. In 0, 1, if it is taken, you move to 1, 1. If it is not taken, you move to 0, 0. Similarly, in 1, 1, if it is not taken, you move to 1, 0. If it is taken, you continue with this. In 1, 0, if it is taken or not taken, you are going to move in this way. So, let us try to see these are the 16 outcomes, the oldest one taken, taken, not taken like that, 16 outcomes are already been given. Now, let us see how the 16 outcomes are going to happen. So, do not worry about the complexity of the table now, let us start with the initial case. The initial entry is given like this, that your branch history table, so it is a 1, 2 type predictor, the outcome of the last one branch is been taken what are the possibility in which the last one branch, the last one branch can be either not taken, then you refer to the first portion of, of the table that is before the slash. If the last occurrence of the same branch was taken, then you refer into the second portion of that. So, the ideally the table meaning is, if it is a 1, 2 predictor, then I look into the occurrence of last one branch last one branch there are two possibilities either it can be not taken or it can be taken. If it is not taken refer to the first portion, if it is taken 
refer to the second portion. Now, what the content means, the 0, 0, 1, 0 means, this is a 2-bit predictor that is telling. Now, let us start. We always start with not taken as the initial, since there is no past occurrence for the very first iteration. When it is n, the starting state is n is not taken, always the initial state is like that, then we refer into the first entry. If it is t, you refer into the second entry. So, in this case, we are referring only to the first entry. Any time whenever n is coming, you refer into the first entry in the table and any time t is coming, we refer into the second entry in the table. That is the difference. So, n, n means I refer to 0, 0. 0, 0 means as per the state diagram, my prediction is n. But what actually happened? Actually, it is taken. So, whether it was a misprediction? Yes, it was a misprediction. Okay. So, the meaning is, I will repeat once again, when the initial state is n, that is always like that. If it is n, I refer to the first entry in the table. First entry indicates 0, 0. 0, 0 means the prediction is not taken, but the actual outcome is given, actual outcome is taken. And since they both are not same, there is a misprediction. Now, this value, whatever that you have, that is same as this. So, in short, this will come here. So, what was the last outcome? Now, we are moving into second iteration. Last outcome was taken. From where will I get? Based on this column. So, last was taken. Now, before that, how do I update the table? In the finite state machine, we know that when you are in state 0, 0, and if the actual outcome is taken, then the state will move to 0, 1. That is why this entry gets changed to 0, 1, whereas the, since the second entry we never referred, that will be intact as such. So, it is 0, 1 state that you have. Now, in 0, 1 state, this is 0, 1 slash 1, 1 is the new state. Now, the last outcome is t. So, where would I refer? I refer into the second one, 1, 1. 1, 1 means taken. Actual was also taken. So, it is a taken case and no. Since my prediction was 1, 1 that is taken and actual was also taken as per the state transition diagram, it is a self loop. So, there is no change in the state. This 1, 1 will be maintained. What is the last outcome t? Since the last outcome t that is been used for the next iteration, t means refer into the second entry 1, 1 that is taken. But what is the actual outcome? third iteration actual outcome is n. Since it is n, what will happen? 1, 1 will move to 1, 0 as per the state transition diagram and no change in the other portion of the table. So, whichever entry we are referring, only that entry is being getting changed. So, 1, 1 become 1, 0. So, it is n. So, previous outcome is n. If it is n, refer to first entry 0, 1. 0, 1 means prediction is n. Whenever the value is 0, 0 or 0, 1, prediction is n. Actual is n, good. So, that means there is no misprediction here. When you are in 0, 1 and you your misprediction happened, that means it was actually not taken. So, it is not a misprediction. The prediction was not taken and the outcome also was not taken, then 0, 1 will become 0, 0. Again, n refer to 0, 0. The prediction was n, actual outcome was t. Since actual outcome is t, as per the state transition diagram, you move from 0, 0 to 0, 1. Previous outcome is t. t means refer the second entry. 1, 0. 1, 0 means prediction is taken. Actual outcome is n. So, this actual outcome filling always happens from this sequence. Actual outcome is n. So, from 1, 0, it will move to 0, 0 state. It is a misprediction. Previous outcome is n. And since it is n, I refer into the first entry. 0, 1 means n, actually happened is taken, state change occurs because of the misprediction, previous outcome is t, t means I refer the second entry, 0, 0, 0, 0 means, so this will determine whatever is the red color font, that will determine what is my prediction. So, if my referred entry is 0, 0 or 0, 1, then prediction is n, if the referred entry is 1, 0 or 1, 1 then the predicted entry is t. So, in this case, it is 0, 0, it is n. Since actually is taken, state change happens. Previous is t, refer to 0, 1. Again, not taken, actually is taken. So, from 0, 1, it will move to 1, 1. Previous one was t, refer 1, 1, t, but it is not taken. 
So then what happens? 1 1 will become 1 0. Previous was n. So previous outcome is n. Refer into the first entry. The value is 1 1. 1 1 means taken. Like that, if you continue like this, you will be in a position wherever there is a red color font that has been marked. These are the entries that are been referred in the appropriate iterations. And what are these values? The value of the last outcome in row number 10 depends upon what was the actual outcome in row number 9. So, this entry is same as this entry what you see here is same as this entry. So, the actual outcome of 9 determines what is the last outcome in 10. Actual outcome in 10th row is dependent on the prediction and last outcome of the nth row is dependent on the actual outcome of the n minus 1th row. So, that entry will be used here and the actual outcome of the nth row is based upon which entry that you refer into the table and if the entry is 0 0 or 0 1 then it is not taken if it is 1 0 or 1 1 then it is been taken. So, in this case the question is asking about the number of mispredictions that you have. So, wherever you see yes these are the places where the mispredictions happened. Now, branch prediction example number 2. Consider a 2 2 type predictor. So, in this case bit more different one it is a 2 2 predictor. Now, what do you mean by 2 2 predictor? You look into the outcome of the last 2 branches. So, the last 2 branches can be n n, n t, t n and t t outcome of the last 2 branches and then it is a 2 bit predictor. B H T is indexed by an outcome of last two branches. The B P B is initialized for N N, N T, T N and T T and this is the initialization value where is 0 0 is for N N. If the last two outcome is not taken, not taken then it is 0 0. If the last two outcome is not taken and taken then it is 0 0. If it is taken and not taken then it is 1 1. If it is taken and taken then it is 1 1. This is the initial value and it is always indexed with an NN entry in the first reference. Consider the last 8 actual outcomes of a single static branch. These are the last 8 outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 where this is the latest and this is the oldest where T means branch is taken and N means the branch is not taken. What would be the contents of branch prediction buffer after the execution of the above mentioned 6 outcomes? So, here we know that it is a 2 bit predictor. So, these are the same two states that we have already seen. So, it is a 2 2 type branch predictor. So, the initial value of the table it is been given. The last 8 outcomes are also been given and this is the 2 bit uh, finite state machine that is been used for changing the states inside your predictor. So, the last outcome is been given. This is the contents of the branch predictor table. The prediction based upon the contents what is the actual outcome. So, the actual outcome is already been given here. Now, let us consider n n initial you know that initially I always refer to n n. So, 0 0 0 0 means my prediction is n, but what is the actual outcome? Actual outcome is n. So, there is no misprediction at all. Now, since it is n there is no state change because when you are in 0 0 and if it is not taken you continue in 0 0 itself. Now, what is the next state? This n would be retained and the new n. So, n n is going to come and n n means again 0 0 you are going to refer 0 0 means prediction is n. What is actual outcome? Again n, again no prediction you continue in the same loop. So, there is no change in the state. Now, if you look the last two outcomes it is n and n. So, in the previous example we were looking only in the last outcome now you have to look last two outcomes. So, n and n is been taken 0 0 again prediction not taken, but here this time actual third iteration actually is taken here is the difference. Now, if you look at the difference accordingly we have to figure it out how it is been going. Now, since the actual was taken this 0 0 will become 0 1 based upon that you are in 0 0 
when the actual one was taken you move into 0 1 that is a transition 0 1. Now, what, what we have to refer we have to refer to n t n means the second last branch and t means the last branch n t means a refer into the second entry 0 0 prediction is n actually is taken. So, here also there is a misprediction that is going to be there. Now, this 0 0 also will become 0 1 because the same 0 0 will move to 0 1 upon taken. Now, the last 2 is t t now t t means I refer to 1 1 the last entry the value is 1 1. So, it is taken actually also taken good. So, there is no misprediction in this case since it is taken and taken value 1 1 would be retained. So, there is no change in the value as such again you look into the last two iterations again t t t t means same last entry we are referring into 1 1. Now, 1 1 means prediction is taken what actually happened now actually it is not taken since actually it is not taken when you are in 1 1 when it is not taken you move to state to 1 0. So, this 1 1 will become 1 0 all other entries remain unaltered. Now, if you look at the past past is T n. So, T n where T stands for second last outcome n stands for last outcome. So, T n refers to the third entry in the table T n is the third entry in the table. So, 1 1 1 1 means taken what actually happened actually it is not taken there is a misprediction. So, when you are in 1 1 and it is not taken then similar to this you move to 1 0. So, this 1 1 value will become 1 0 and what are the last two outcomes now n n n n means the very first entry it is already 0 1 my prediction is n, but actually it is taken. So, when you are in 0 1 and if it is taken then you move to the state 1 1. So, the 0 1 will become 1 1 all others remain unchanged. So, the final state is 1 1 0 1 1 0 and 1 0. So, this is the difference and look at the difference between these two. So, here the question is what is the final state this is the final state of the table that you will get and the illustration is been shown. So, what is the difference between the last two branch predictor problem we had the first branch predictor problem it was a 1 2 type predictor. So, when you talk about 1 2 type predictor then we look into the last one branch outcome and then it is a 2 bit automata that gives. Since it is 2 bit the state transition is based upon a 2 bit standard finite automata we just have discussed on it. Now, when you have a 2 2 2 type predictor that is the last problem we worked out 2 2 means I look into the last two branches the outcome of the last two branches. So, that means there is potentially four possible options in which the last two branches can happen n n both were not taken n t the second last branch was not taken the previous branch was taken that is called n t t n means the second last was taken the previous one was not taken and t t means both are not taken and then we have one more that is a TT case in TT case both are taken. So, with these four possibilities there are actually four entries in the table depending upon the last two outcomes of the branch you either refer to the NN entry or you refer to the NT entry or you refer to the TN entry or you refer to the TT entry and this entry would be a 2 bit value this 2 bit value if it is 0 0 or 0 1 then the prediction is not taken or n if it is 1 0 or 1 1 then the prediction is t when the prediction is n and the prediction is t that is the outcome of the branch predictor upon which the program control now based on the finite state machine where depending on your state the prediction applies and depending on the actual outcome the state transition is being applied so these two examples that we discussed I request all of you to go through it thoroughly try to understand and during the live sessions if at all there are any queries feel free to ask to us. Concept of branch prediction is very very useful still it is a very active so research domain all our microprocessors have branch predictors and it is with the help of branch predictors that control hazards are being handled. I hope today's uh, tutorial video was useful for you in understanding the branch predictor concept in a more deeper way. With this we conclude this lecture thank you.